So I have a ton of, you know, from the employee perspective of what it looks like to us when you're applying. So make sure to tune in for those tips. Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now my goal is that out of this video is show you guys how you can open your own online jobs at TH account even if you don't have any experience. Now, if this is your guys' first time on my channel, my name is Daniela Lacaba. I am the virtual ate. I've been working from home since I was 15 years old and now run an outsourcing agency in the Philippines. And I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, if you guys have no idea what online jobs at PH is, this is sadly mostly for my Filipino watchers out there. This is a platform where you can apply for jobs. Now, when I was 15 years old, this was wasn't that popular yet, so I didn't use it at the beginning, but I did use it a lot once I turned 18 because they do require that you're at least 18 years old to be able to open an account. However, make sure that you stick until the end of this video where I'll talk about the different tips and tricks that you can do, even if you're a minor, of how to still get a job out of the platform. Now again, this will be a step by step, so make sure that while you're watching this video, you are taking notes because I will also be giving you guys a few hacks because as an employer, I still use online jobs at PH. So I've not just used it just as an applicant, I've used it also as a person hiring people. So I have a ton of, you know, from the employee perspective of what it looks like to us when you're applying. So make sure to tune in for those tips. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is, of course, go to online jobs at PH. Uh, I'm using an incognito window just to make sure that you guys don't see anything secret um, and also at the same time so you guys can see it just as what you would see on your browser for me since I've opened online jobs at BH before it might look different for me it might look for different for you so I'm just using the incognito for this one so right here when you even just open the page you can see there's two columns there's one column that is showing people's resumes people's profiles and the, the other column is for people who are looking for jobs and you can already see these are recent jobs posted so right as an employer posts, it's right there, first right in center. And of course, to be able to sign up, just go to sign up, clicking that sign up button. And then you can go through, of course, I'm a worker and you can fill out this information. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be signing up my sister. So this is going to be a real account. So I'm gonna walk you guys through how to verify it, how to make sure that you're seen. And of course, this is gonna be my sister's profile. So I'm gonna make sure as heck that it's going to show up for employers. Okay, so as you're signing up, you will see here, of course, you have to fill out your full name. Again, make sure as much as possible that that really is your full name because later on when they do ask for an ID verification, it has to be close to your name. Your email address, again, needs to be professional enough because this is the email address that employers will be using to contact you. As an employer, I have so many people who sent me their email address that was used when they were 15, they were 14, where for me, my email address when I was younger was minlyandcute at gmail.com. Um, and you guys probably even see it still on this YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com slash minlyandcute, it's still going to show up, sadly, because that was the username that I had before. But uh, that's why you need a little bit more professional, especially as you are starting out. Now, as a password, again, I really recommend that you guys make sure that this is secure. Sadly, online jobs at PH has been hacked before, so you want to make sure that your password itself is secure, that it's not the password that you're using for other platforms. Now, again, I recommend a tool called LastPass, so it can create a unique password for you every time that you create an account, and it saves that password, so you don't have to remember it every time. Now, here, of course, you're clicking I'm Filipino, I understand online jobs at PH is only for Filipino workers. Um, and then it's going to ask you a Tagalog question. So here is, um, si Juan ay anak ng aking lola at ama ng aking kapatid, kano ano ko si Juan, it's your father. And of course, again, make sure that you don't have multiple accounts. So right there, you click, I don't have an account and I know multiple accounts are not allowed. And then you're agreeing to their terms of service and privacy policy. Again, I really recommend that you guys read through that. I've read it through it myself before. Um, so that's why I'm just checking on that. So just click register. So there you go. Congratulations, your account has been created. So of course, then you're going to confirm your registration by going into your inbox just so they can make sure that they can send you future emails. And the thing to keep in mind is as you're applying for jobs, 
jobs or as employers contact you to work with you, they're going to use your email. So again, make sure that you confirm that with online jobs at PH. And then the next prompt, once you've confirmed, and this is actually what shows up after you confirm your email address, is you're going to start filling out your profile. Now, just like your Facebook account or your LinkedIn account, you are going to have to make sure that you put in accurate information because this is the information that's going to show up for employers. Now, job title right here is going to be kind of your first hurdle if you're not sure yet. Now, I do have a list of 100 plus skills that you can start with online and you guys can download that PDF for free below. But for this one, since my sister just wants to start out as a general virtual assistant, then that's what I'm going to do. Now, if you guys want a more step-by-step -step process of how to become a virtual assistant, you guys can check out that video right here. But basically, I'm just going to start filling this out as if I was a virtual assistant. So right here, I'm going to put virtual assistant. Now, it's going to be a little bit stronger if you put in some keywords that they might be looking for. So if you are a virtual assistant and you are really strong on your content writing skills or your proofreading skills like my sister is, then I would put content writer and proofreader right there. So then employers, when they search on online jobs at PH, and I'll walk you guys through that process in a little bit, they are able to see your profile just because you use the keywords that they're using. Try not to use as much as possible keywords that are highfalutin or keywords that don't really make sense that sound really good to you but for people who are just searching people who are just like desperate to hire someone they're not going to use that keyword so keep that in mind so next is a summary of your skills now usually here like for me if you guys go to my own online jobs bh account i actually have a summary of like the 15 plus main skills that i have and that's me because i've been working online for 10 years and i have a ton of skills but for my sister specifically, I'm just going to really focus on her content writing and proofreading skills because that's one that she really has and also the admin skills. So I'm going to fill this out in a little bit and hopefully give you guys a little bit of idea of what to put here on your summary of skills. So I right here, I just wrote a really rough draft of what your summary of skills can look like. Now, if you guys watched my video on how to write your resume, I've actually put in this little bit of formula. So it's basically I help X, so the person or the people that you're aiming to to help be able to have or be able to create the outcome whatever that outcome can be for you so for example if you're a content creator then of course you're helping them create content if you're a bookkeeper you're going to help them make sure that all of their accounts are in order one thing to really keep in mind that you are getting hired to solve a problem for that employer not just getting hired for nothing you are being hired or brought onto a company to solve a certain problem that they have or to improve something that they already have as well. So you want to be solutions oriented when it comes to you talking about yourself. You're saying that I am the solution to the problem that you have been facing. So the next thing is what is then the skills that you're bringing on? So again, it's I help X. So X is you know, I help niche solve problem with my skills as blank, whatever it is your skills are. And that's kind of the general flow that I kind of followed with this one. And then you wanna talk about any experience that you might have had. If you don't have experience at all, then I really recommend that you guys go on to other videos on YouTube as well and start looking at, you know, as a virtual assistant, as a writer, what else that they do and start already creating that experience. And it doesn't have to be paid experience right away. It can be just free experience that you're doing for your parents or you're doing for a friend or a teacher of yours again it doesn't have to be actual paid experience for you to be able to say you have experience on this and of course like I said earlier try to use words or keywords that employers are going to be searching for just to up that ante of making sure that you do get found on online jobs at PH now here your desired salary I do have a whole video on how to price yourself online but basically you just want to have this be over with it doesn't have to be that what you priced yourself here is what the employers will pay you they will probably be more than happy to pay you more. For my sister, I'm just going to pick 15000 just because she wants just to do this part-time. Um, so I'm not going to go over that. And then here, you can pick up what is your high education attainment. For my sister, I'm just going to put high school diploma since she's still in college. Um, and experience here is, again, you can say no experience. You can stay still a student. You can be honest or you can already show if you've had experience before. So for example, for me, one of my first mini jobs before as well was becoming or being an admin assistant.
assistant to my mother. I would do a little bit of graphics for her, what they needed for her office, for example, if they were doing an event. I would do some video editing, so it was kind of very all around for me. So that is what I put into my resume before. So try to think back. Any experiences, anything that you've done before. Again, if you don't have anything, you can just put no prior experience. But for my sister, luckily she has uh, already had spent a year proofreading. So you can just put that. Um, it could be six months, it could be three months. It doesn't really matter. This is again, just a data point for employers when they're trying to decide because some of them do really want people who don't have experience because then you don't have any of the systems that you might have in your head of what they're going to do. What that means is that say as a writer, you have a certain process already from the previous employer that you had. So of course you're naturally going to follow that. But your new employer might have a new system. So hiring someone who doesn't have a lot of experience yet is actually an advantage because they can teach their process and it's going to be easier for you to do the uptake. Next is of course employment status. For here, we can do still in school or it could be just part time. Some employers do find it as a negative if you're still in school, but if they're just looking for someone to do one-off jobs or just part time, then you're perfect fit for that. Here is, you wanna be honest, of course the number of hours you wanna work in a week. So for my sister, I'm just gonna put 10 plus. She's going to probably edit this part. Um, so we'll just put 10 plus. Date of birth, of course, again, be honest because this will show up on your profile and for employer and for online jobs at page itself, they wanna make sure that you are over 18. Now for the phone number, again, you wanna make sure that you, this is real because they will ask you to verify later on. And of course, if you do have a website, you can put it here. Again, you don't have to. This is just if you have some sort of website that leads to your portfolio, for example. If so, you have some sort of website that leads to them seeing some of your work. If you're a writer, for example, then you have an account at medium.com or you have some articles on LinkedIn. This is where you can put those websites. It doesn't have to be your personal website. Again, it can just be a portfolio of your past work. This could even be a Google Drive folder containing all of the things that you have done before. And the last thing that I'm going to kind of a little bit explain on the creating profile part is, yes, I'm willing to use Timeproof. Now, Timeproof is actually a app that you get to use with employers where it's a way where you can track time. So you can just click this. It's just really a really simple like tool that you use. It's how they see how many hours you've actually worked so they know how much to pay you. Uh, but some employers usually already have either already have have a tool that they do use to track your time or they actually don't care at all as long as you get the work done. So for this one, I'm just going to click, yes, I'm willing to use time proof, uh, but that is what time proof is. So then you're just clicking done and then you're going to be taken here to tell us your skills. So here you can see there's a ton of different skills that you can choose from, from different skill sets. So, you know, we have a uh, virtual system, we have English, we have writing, we have marketing sales. And the thing here that you guys might want to know that's interesting as an employer's point of view is this is also the same categories that we get when we're choosing what skill we want to hire for. So as an example, and I'll go to their main site right here just to kind of give you guys, again, that employer's point of view of what that looks like for us. If you go to job board um, and then you click any of them, any of, any of these that just popped up, you'll see that there's like skills right here that we have to choose as the employer. So you want to keep in mind and you want to research if you're not sure what skills to do or what skills to highlight, you want to go through and find whatever job it is that you're trying to get and see what skills employers usually ask for, what skills usually pop out. So here, of course, there's English speaking, there's marketing and sales. Here, there's project management. So you want to pick, of course, skills that you know, not just any skill, but if you want just a little bit of a tip right there as you're picking out your skill, you want to make sure that it's a skill that employers are actually looking for. So for my sister, I'm just going to go ahead and pick um, random ones that later on she can fix and update herself. Um, and of course, these are ones that I also know that she is actually good at. Okay, so once you're done, of course, you're going to click I'm done with ratings. Again, you don't have to go through every single one and say that you have this skill if you don't have it. Because later on, if they see that and they're going to ask you and you don't know the answer, then it's going to be an uncomfortable situation. So now here you're going to be uh, taken to congratulations. You're well on your way to having an online job. So you can either view your account or apply for which jobs you're qualified for. But I actually recommend going and viewing your account. So then you can add a few more things. So right here, and I love that they have this now, they didn't used to have this, is you know working uh, via online database is safe, but please follow the following warnings. Never accept money that you're instructed to send to someone else. That is something illegal actually. And you guys can find out more 
more about different scams online by checking on this video right here. But basically, this is something that is actually like a bad thing to do and they usually people from a different country to be able to move money illegally. So again, don't do that. Of course, don't allow anyone else to use your account or create secondary accounts or fake info. You will be banned. You know, if possible, ask to be paid each week until you fully trust your employer. That one really depends on your relationship with the employer, but that is something that I also recommend as you are starting out. This one here is basically avoiding employers that force you to register on a different site as part of the interview process. That's a little bit sketchy, especially if they're going to ask you for really sensitive information like your passport, your ID, things that if you're just in the interview process, you're not hired yet, is going to be sketchy. Next, you're going to get to this notification here, which is basically your account has now been selected to for our required account verification process shown below. So you have to upload a profile picture. That's why I didn't write a way jump into searching for jobs. I want you guys to go through updating your account. Now, one thing that is going to be interesting for you guys is right here is now your link to your online job CVH account. Make sure to save this, make sure to put this somewhere. So when you are talking to someone online, you can send them to your online job CVH. PH. So here you have to upload a profile picture, upload a government ID. That's why I said make sure that you're sticking to your real name. You upload a selfie picture of yourself and your address and then upload a utility bill. Now I know this is going to be a little bit harder if you are still a student and are not paying for your own bills. But one thing that you can do is you can upload a utility bill with your parents name and then you can create a note next to that saying that this person is my daughter that she lives with me and then having your parents sign that so it's kind of like another note um, stating that you do live in that place that's all that they're trying to do is they're truly trying to make sure that you are who you say that you are so i'm not going to do all of this because my sister's going to do all of this but after you do this process there is an id proof right here if you scroll down an id proof that shows how much you've proven that you are a real person and later on once you've finished all of this you're going to have a check mark right next to your profile that again shows that you are verified so once you do have your requirements you can click access verification area and that's usually where you can upload all of the things that are required of you so you can see that there's points equivalent to each verification now i'm going to apologize for you guys for this next part there's going to be some construction in the background i tried to film earlier but they're there now next thing is you want to increase your chances of getting your job by taking a proficiency test. So there's going to be, it's basically just a test on how good you are at, the, at a certain skill. So you guys can click on that and be able to see what are the different types of tests. So there's usually the IQ test. When you take the IQ test after you're done, you take a screenshot of it and then you upload it into your profile. English test, the same way, you go through it. Once you're done, take a screenshot, upload your profile. Now your disk profile, if you've never come across it before, is actually a a little bit of a personality test, but not really. It just shows employers how you think. There's not really a right or wrong answer. It's just something that as employers are looking at your profile and getting to know you, this is something that they would be good for them to know. Of course, again, make sure that you add a profile picture and it has to be a profile picture that's above the chest. It's not a selfie. It has to be professional enough. So of course, nothing that is just too close to your face. It has to be, again, above your chest have it be a little bit square and maybe a plain white background or some sort of formal background. So for example, for me, I can take a picture of myself right now and then have that be as my profile picture. Now, once you've done all of that, once you've verified yourself, once you've uploaded all of your IDs, then the next thing you're going to want to do is search for a job, right? So I'm going to now log into my online jobs at BH account, just so it's verified, it's all set up, uh, and be able to walk you guys through the process of how to be able to search for jobs on online jobs at BH and also how to apply. I do have to apologize, the construction is getting louder, but I will still push through and finish walking you guys through this last part of the process. Now for here, you guys can see I have a 95 ID proof. Um, I've put, you know, the salary that I want, it's about 50,000 a month. Um, so I've really finished all of the stuff that was missing from my sister's profile earlier. You can see that I did do the disc and you guys can see what that was. You know, my dominance is 47, influence is 33, steadiness is 14 and compliance is seven. That's kind of just scores of what kind of person you are. Again, it's kind of a personality test, not really. Um, you can see my IQ, you can see my English score, um, and you can see that uh, this is what your profile will look like once you're verified. Um, you can see messages of people who can message you as the employer um, and any bookmark job posts that you have found. Now, applying for the job, again, go to job board, and here, again, you search by the job that you want. So for example, let's say I do want a writing gig. I just type in writer, 
and then here I'll be able to see a ton of writing jobs already. So here we have copywriter or social, uh, slash social media VA, uh, graphic designer, and you guys can see there's little marks that says full time, freelance, any. So if you're full time, part time, any, they're fine. Um, you will be able to see some of these, you'll see part time. So again, one thing to really keep in mind is as an employer, if you don't get a, someone to apply within a few days, we do repost because here is always the newest post, which is right because as a VA or someone who's applying for a job, you want to have the latest one. But here, I'm just going to click on this one copywriter slash social media VA and you want to read through what it is that they're looking for. So then you can match your application letter for this. And again, I do have a whole video on how to write your application letter you guys should check out right here but for this one you can see that they're asking for at least three to five years copy experience if you don't really have that try not to apply for this i really recommend that you guys read through the post i really apologize for the noise and make sure that you hit whatever requirement that they're asking for so for example uh you need to have a skype id account so make sure that you have one make sure that you have ex some experience with linkedin sales navigator again you really want to make sure that you do match who they're looking for before you apply or else you're just breaking your own heart so try to read through and really see because some employers will actually ask for a specific word or specific keyword to be inputted when you're applying so for example for me as an employer i would ask them to have a specific subject line just to make sure that they did read the actual job post now one of the biggest reasons that you guys do want to make sure that you verify yourself up to the highest ID proof that you can is some of these jobs are not going to be perfect for you just because you have a low ID score. Let me pick a random one. Let's say you want to apply for this one. They will say the ID proof that they want, which is 70. So if you don't have 70, you can't apply for this job. So once you found a job that sounds good, everything is nice, you just click apply for a job right there. And that's where you want to write your application letter. So again, make sure that you do refer back to the actual job post so you can respond to it. That's usually the biggest tip that I have when it comes to applying for jobs is your application letter needs to be a response to the job ad. So you want to fill this out subject line. You want to have it whatever was the title that they put on 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 the user PH. So if they put here, for example, for this one, SEO blogger slash content writer, you can copy that or you can uh, make that smaller also just small letters. Um, it doesn't have to be the big bold one that they have and the point of me doing this part is then you are adding and you can put like for me i'll just put our last name um, you can add your name on there one of the things that really drive me nuts as an employer is when people have the same subject line it actually stacked inside of my inbox kind of like people just kept replying to the same email over and over again so you want to make sure that you have a unique subject line or again read through if they wanted a unique subject line and put that there. Um, again, put the message on here as the your application letter, contact info, um, and then sending your that email. Now, one of the magical things later on that does happen is people will start just emailing you just because of your profile. I've had that happen to me multiple times. And the ways that usually happen is I either just open my online jobs at PH account, you know, I was doing a video or I was walking someone through it. And tomorrow or later on, because of the way my profile is structured, people will actually emailing me to ask me to apply for the job. So if you do follow all of the steps that I just walked you guys through, if you guys follow the usual really good tips when it comes to having an online jobs at PH account, it's going to be again faster for you to get that job. I did promise you guys, if you're not 18 yet, if you are a student, how do you find a job seller online jobs at PH? Now here is just go to a job board and this will take time is you want to find a job that asks you to apply outside of online jobs at PH. That's the only way sadly that you can do that. So you have to open a couple of job posts to be able to find these, but they do exist. And I have seen them where they will ask you to uh, submit through a Google form, through a job form to an actual email address that they will put in the job ad. Sadly, I can't find any right now, but that is one tip that you guys can follow if you want to apply for a job and you're not 18 yet. Now, if you guys like this video, despite the noise, please hit that like button right there. And hopefully I've been able to help you guys do the step-by-step -step walkthrough of opening an online job set PH account and how to apply. Now, our comment for this week comes from the video that I just uploaded, which is how to open a PayPal account as a freelancer. And it's basically from Christina Mejia, where she asks, what type of bank account can I link to my PayPal account? Can it be savings account or checking account from BPO or BPI? Now, what I really recommend is Union Bank, because just Union Bank 
was one of the first accounts that was kind of top tier for PayPal. And it's one where I've used before and just works seamlessly. And now no, PayPal does have other accounts that would like you to use. A savings account is fine. You can use BDO or BPI, but the bank that I do recommend is Union Bank. Now, if you guys want your comment featured or answered in a future video, make sure to leave those below. And if you still haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home. You guys can check out these other two videos right here for more tips on how to start your online career. Now, I hope you guys have an awesome day and remember that small steps matters and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!